welcome folks to this ANU um, webinar and discussion. We've got some exciting panelists here to tell you about what it's like to study at, uh, in the ANU College of Science and in particular the Mathematical Sciences Institute. Um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land from which I'm presenting today. Uh, and I'd like to pay my respects to elders past and present. So um, let's start by meeting the panelists, the people who have the answers to what it's like to study at MSI. So um, we have three panelists here. We have Georgie. Georgie, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about um, how you ended up at MSI and what you're studying here? Yeah, sure. So I'm actually from Canberra, so I grew up here. Uh, and I'm in my third year studying a double degree, so I'm doing a Bachelor of Mathematical Sciences and a Bachelor of Science majoring in computer science. Uh, initially, when I got here, I was only doing a computer science degree, but then I really enjoyed the maths in first year, so I added the extra maths degree. Um, and I'm just sort of going through that at the moment and seeing uh, where I end up. So the, the, the beauty of mathematics reeled you in, even, yeah. though, you didn't know that, even though you didn't know that that was necessarily um, something you wanted to do when you first started. Yeah, I mean, I always kind of, I, I liked maths in school, but I never imagined that I would want to only do maths just for maths sake. All right, well, maybe we'll hear, uh, I will probe that a little bit more as we go along. And, um, but for, let's introduce Eamon. Yeah, hi, my name is Eamon. Um, so I've actually just finished my degree. So I did the Bachelor of Mathematical Sciences with honours. Mm -hmm. I just did the single degree. That was all I was up to for the last four years. Um, yeah, so with honours, I did a thesis on multivariate public key cryptography. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I came from Newcastle, not from Canberra. And how did I settle on ANU? I think I'd, I'd, I'd visited here before and I really liked sort of the look of the uni and I knew it was obviously one of the best in Australia for maths. So yeah, went out on a limb and moved here. <laughs> Congratulations on finishing up, Eamon. Yeah, is, thank you. This is terrific. And um, I think I want to hear a bit more about what you might do with the expertise you've developed as in the webinar as we go along. Hmm. But before we get into that, uh, let's let's meet Sandra. G'day, Sandra. Want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I'm Sandra, and I'm in the first year of my PhD here at the ANU. I'm from Brisbane, though I've lived overseas quite a bit in the past before moving to Australia. Um, and I started at the ANU in my honors year, actually. So I did my, I did a double degree at UQ. I did a Bachelor of Science in Physics and a Bachelor of Mathematics in Applied Math. Um, and then I decided to move here for my honors year because there was some really interesting research happening for mathematical modeling of plasma physics. So I moved here to work with a particular supervisor um, and I enjoyed my honors year so much that I decided to stay here for my PhD as well. Right. Well, when I hear, Sandra, when I hear that you're working with things like plasma, I just want to know, is your research going to kill me? No, right, we, we are studying plasma for um, the purpose of nuclear fusion. So for right. clean energy development. All right, wonderful. Uh, uh, well, I, uh, folks, I think you can see from just those brief introductions already that the three people who are helping us out today all have different stories and they've got really interesting aspects to what they might be able to tell us about. So. I have a collection of questions here, which I'm going to pose to the panelists and we'll try to bring out their stories and maybe you'll relate to some of them and maybe you'll, your imagination will be, um, uh, sort of will, will be started up, fired up by what you hear or you'll just be curious. So the first question that we have uh, crew is um, about that moment when you realize you actually wanted to study mathematics. Um, so sort of a light bulb moment. When, when did you either accept the accept the inevitability of your of your desire to study mathematics, or realise that actually that's what you wanted to do? Um, so I don't think we need to um, stand on too much ceremony. But um, Georgie, do you want to start us off? Yeah, sure. Uh, so 
it really was um, probably into my second semester of uni and I was looking at the courses I was going to do the following year mm -hmm. and I realized that I wasn't going to be able to do any maths courses in my computing degree and I I was sort of thinking about the courses I'd done so far and I was like wow I really really enjoyed and got a lot out of those maths courses that I've already done and I didn't want uh, to stop doing them or to slow down on the maths side um, and just the more I do it the more I get out of it. It was when you faced the, the reality that you didn't that you weren't necessarily going to be taking learning more mathematics ex I mean, you would learn mathematics in advanced computing courses anyway, but when you realize you wouldn't be taking any more mathematics courses, you realize actually that's something I want to, something I have enjoyed. Yeah. So can you imagine the 17 year old you at high school having felt that way? Yeah, not at all. <laughs> like, I think if 17 year old me heard I was doing a degree in maths, I would have been like, why? Like, you think you'd want to have a stern word with you about your choices? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I did like maths, like I, I've always sort of uh, enjoyed maths classes, but never really thought about it much outside of school. And I always thought of it more as it's not, it's a subject that's helpful for other subjects. Uh, it wasn't really till uni that I saw maths on its own and what you can do with justice. Right. So this is interesting. So it's a, it was a fir first year courses that you realised something about mathematics was uh, standalone or more interesting than you thought. Yeah. A fair thing to say. So yeah. Yeah. I, is there any way you could articulate what the nature of mathematics, so I guess your understanding of the nature of mathematics somehow evolved. Yeah. But what, 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 what do you think it was before you started university? What do you think it was when you realized you wanted to do more of it? Yeah, it's, it's actually, it's a good question. It's hard to pinpoint exactly um, mm. what changed. I think it was a big part of school maths is sort of they're teaching you how to do things. And the sort of ultimate goal is to understand really the process behind how to do certain things. Um, and I feel like uni maths has a lot more of you trying to figure out how to do things on your own. Um, so there's a lot of sort of creativity required and out of the box thinking um, that I just didn't you see as much. You need to understand the nature of, of the task and the, the goal and why it's important. Yeah. Who's around so that you can con construct. So it's when you realise that you could be, that mathematics was a full contact intellectual sport perhaps. Yeah, as yeah. As opposed to just uh, a collection of well-drilled procedures. Yeah, I think not so. Oh, well, um, that's really interesting. And I'm glad to hear that first year mathematics courses took you to a new place, because I think that's a really important thing we're trying to do. It's not about learning more facts. It's about developing your intellectual outlook, taking, taking you to a new place. Um, hey, Eamon, you came in wanting, studying mathematics to start with. And yes. you stuck with it. So um, maybe your your story of when you realised you want to study mathematics, it, there must be something that's different from what from your but how would you say? Yeah, you yeah. So it definitely happened earlier. Um, it's hard to like pinpoint an exact time when I decided I would study maths, but mm -hmm. certainly even as early as like fifteen or sixteen in high school. Um, can't say. Like I guess I started to read some things outside of what we did in high school, which I think is when I had the sort of same realization as Georgie, where it's not just these procedural things that you learn how to do something that's like a more creative process behind it. And I really liked that. Right. Great. And um, so how did you start to read mathematics? Uh, where did I start? Did you start with, um, was it, were you cracking a textbook related to a, a course or did you just pick up the not really a textbook per se. So one, actually, no, there is, there is a book that comes to mind. Uh, it was, it's called Book of Proof, I think by Richard Hammack. I don't know if you've heard of it, but um, it's a, it's pretty approachable book. He just, but he talks about, you know, how a proof works and you go through the basics of logic, but it, it's very, like, it's readable for a high school student. It's quite down to earth. Um, yeah, that, that was a really good book. 
to what All right, folks, you heard it here. We've got a strong endorsement for the book of proof from Avon. Yeah. You have to declare any financial interest in this book. No, no financial interest. <laughs> well, that's great. So, um, but again, I'm hearing that it was a realization that uh, mathematics is um, this intellectual endeavor where you try to figure out why things are true, what's yes. true and why. That was, that was interesting. And so did the first year live up to your dreams and expectations? If you, so you must've come in hoping for something. Yeah, yeah, I'd say definitely did. Um, so one of, I remember the first, maybe the first lecture of 1115, um, Math 2015, it's one of the first year courses. So I had Griff was the lecturer when I was taking it. I think he still is. Yeah. And uh, very, very close to the start, he just sort of declared that we were going to prove the fundamental theorem of calculus, which is the relationship between differentiation and integration. And like it was, it was exciting that that was the goal outright and it was going to take like, you know, 10 weeks of <laughs> leading up to it to get there. Um, so. Oh, good. It was so, exciting to like have that. Yeah, yeah. So your attention was was grabbed by the early declaration that really we are going to be proving things here. And yep. that, that's good. Terrific. Um, all right. Uh, Sandra, you were studying um, physics and applied mathematics. Yes. And when did you when did you sort of realize that mathematics whether it's whether it's a, whether you called it applied or not at the time, when did you realize that mathematics was something you wanted to formally pursue? Yeah, I, I would say that I said I got a major in applied math, but I studied a lot of math that wouldn't be classically, you know, classified as applied. I think people sometimes that word can be, you know, used in different contexts. But anyway, I had a similar experience to Georgie actually. So when I entered um, my undergrad, I was not studying math. I was studying physics and chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, and in my first year, as you study physics, you, you know, do all the first year mathematics courses and physics itself is a very mathematical subject. Um, and when I got to the end of my first year, I realized that actually like my favorite parts of the year had been when I'd been studying mathematics and when I'd been studying math in my physics courses, like I preferred those parts of the physics course so much more to, you know, the experimental part, which some people really love, you know, like tinkering around with things. I was like, no, no I'm good, thanks. Um, and I really enjoyed the programming aspects of it as well. Um, so at the end, I still remember on the sense, like the day before census day of second semester, I called my dad and I said to him on the phone, because I think my dad was overseas. I said to him, dad, I'm about to drop chemistry tomorrow and switch into math. Um, and that's what I did. And, and you were still allowed to visit home and speak to the rest of your family after this? Oh, you weren't yeah, I think I'd already, like my dad had, um, before I started at university, I was trying to decide whether I was going to study engineering, which is what my dad studied, or I was going to study science. So my dad had already, you know, warmed up to the fact that I wasn't going to study engineering. So, you know, after that, it was just whatever you want, darling. Yeah. Well, um, how hard did you find that phone call to make? Oh, I think I've been pretty lucky that I have really supportive and accepting parents. So I think they've always just supported me in what I wanted yeah. to do. So it was pretty, it was pretty okay. Yeah. But what about this feeling when you're building up to this decision to drop this chemistry course? It took it, you stressed out? I was very stressed out and it took a lot of nerves and a lot of time. Hence, you know, the timing of literally the day before that I had to make the choice of census day. So... Well, so this, is, of course, this is um, this story is quite. All, all, all three of these stories are, are stories that I've heard before. Versions of them, of course, your individuals and the details are slightly different. But um, one thing I will say, uh, Sandra, is that it takes a certain amount of courage to admit that you want to change your mind in a certain way, change degrees. And Georgie had to do that as well. And Eamon was one of the, the lucky ones who appeared to get it right early. But um, I think it's really important for everyone to realize 
many, if not most students change their mind about some aspect of what they're going to study at university. It is completely normal. So no, you can I add something to get it right before you start. Amen, it's wonderful that you did. <laughs> um, but what Georgie and Sandra's stories have in common is that once they're at university, they're able to respond to what their instincts, each of you had a moment where you said, but I really like the math. Now I see that that's what, that I've been enjoying it. So it's, it's a bit of a case of, I think when you're selecting a degree at university, you do the best you can to get it right because you know something about yourself and you're probably not going to be completely wrong, but be prepared, be open-minded about what you see in your first year. And yes, that includes if you come in studying mathematics, but you take a totally awesome chemistry course, be open-minded about what that means, right? Because we don't, um, our interest is in you, uh, the student finding the, 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 the thing that you really connect with, because that's how you're going to achieve um, your potential is in the thing that you're, that gets you excited. So, um, you know, well done, well done, uh, Georgie and Sandra on, on, on seeing, on understanding yourself and being um, brave enough to make that call because um, it is, you know, it's something people are anxious about, but it's entirely normal. Okay, so the next question on my list is, is a ripper. I've heard that mathematics can be challenging. Uh, I, th I, think I've, I think I've heard that many times uh, and I think mathematics has a reputation, but how could students, you, each, each of you has been through a first year at university, that moment when you stepped, up, stepped out from high school into the university and you're filled with worry that it's gonna be hard or too hard. How could students, what could students do just before or just as university starting to feel comfortable and confident? So Georgie, you're the closest to this moment. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think, yeah, first year was, I really enjoyed first year, but it was a very challenging year. Like there's a big jump up academically from school. And then there was also all the other new things like new environment, new people, like uh, new style of learning. It's, it's also brand new and you just don't know what to expect. Um, I think... I don't think I did very much to prepare for it. Um, apart from just engaging in all of the academic stuff I did before getting to uni, like I engaged in school, I took any opportunities that I got uh, to do academic stuff. Well, um, 13 years of preparation. Yeah, yeah. You must... What to do in the week before. Yeah, I think for me, what really helped when I first got here, um, was just realizing that everyone around me was also finding it very hard and scary and challenging. Yeah. Uh, and I met a few people uh, by going to lectures and just talking to the people at lectures, which can be scary, uh, but I would highly recommend it. Um, and once you start to meet those people and you realize actually, you know, I, I come in feeling very underprepared, but actually I have pretty much the exact same preparation as everyone else. You know, we've all done year 12 and yeah. I yeah, yeah. Um, this is a really common feeling that people have in the first couple of weeks. They're, they're worried that they've accidentally been admitted, but they're, but they're really not ready for it. Um, uh, and at some point, we hope that people realise that the thing that you realise, which is actually you're in the same place as your classmates. And that doesn't mean being ready is not the same as having all guaranteed success, right? Because you have to apply yourself and you have to be open to the, the ideas and the, and the ways of working and so on. But, um, okay, so in summary, would you say you, prepare, you prepared for university by just being, you didn't do anything in particular that you didn't do just to be successful at school? Uh, not before I got to university. Yeah. Um, I think it was when I very first got here talking to people. Good. So, so it was, yeah, when, when you're here, then you, you, you 
you engage with the people around you. And besides making a few friends, which really helps, um, it, it allowed you to, to, to realize that you were in a good place. Yeah. Your preparation was fine. Good. All right. Uh, Eamon, what did you do to get ready for university, knowing that mathematics can be challenging? Yeah, so well... Way, wouldn't you be disappointed if it wasn't? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, well, I don't think I did anything in particular to prepare for first year, um, aside from, as Georgie said, like everything you do in high school leading up to it. Um, I, I'd, I'd say more so what I would talk about is like what you do in the first sort of semester at uni. Is that... Should I talk about that? Yeah, go for yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I, like... One thing that you notice in maths that really, really, I think you mentioned it, like is making friends and forming study groups to work on assignments. So, so in the maths department, we're encouraged to work on assignments together. You don't write the same assignment, you have to write your own assignment, but you can work on the problems as a team. And like, I wouldn't have got through my degree without the help of a lot of my classmates. And it's something and it's you need to do. Really, as much fun either, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's, I think it's one of the joys of maths is doing it with other people. Um, and by so, the way, that's what, that's what research is like. Yeah. Almost all mathematics research is collaborative and um, it's much more productive that way. But please, please, please continue. So your experience is... Yes, so friends help. Um, also, there's a lot of like going to office hours with the lecturers really helps. Um, they often give off little tips that you might miss from a normal lecture. Um, there's the drop-in sessions for maths um, I didn't go to many of those, but they were pretty useful, especially at the start. Um, yeah, there's a lot of resources available. Right. Um, great. So making the most of the jo joining the community and, and starting to realize that the community, as a community of learners, you get further. Every yep. yeah. Every individual gets further as a community, if you're act, acting as a community of learners, yep. I'm, uh, I'm getting nerdy on the teaching theory here, but this is, this is something that we are intentionally trying to create at MSI, is a community of learning. Because for exactly the reasons you, should, you just described, once you're in the community, once you're seeing people and talking to people, then you realize, oh, this, the uh, drop-in sessions are helpful. Oh, because my friend got was help was found it helpful, or um, or sort of figuring out the big ideas for problems together, and then practicing the write up on your own, and so on. this is uh, great. Okay, so again, folks, we're hearing we when you're getting ready to study mathematics, we don't want you spending the two weeks before you come here furiously trying to learn new mathematics or. Um, taking online courses at MIT or, or, or something to try to get ready. Um, you're certainly welcome to, but this is not what we need you to do to get ready as much as be ready to join the community and be open to those opportunities. Sandra, what advice do you have for people? Because you obviously had, um, you mentioned in your story of finding mathematics that it was Again, this first year experience. So something about your first year at UQ must have gone well. Yeah, I think it was it was probably one of the the best years of my life, to be honest. Um, so it was it was really great. I think it was um, probably similar to Georgie and Eamon's experience as well. It's a hard year and there's a lot of work expected of you and it's very different to school and anything that you've done before in that sense. Mm -hmm. But there is a real um, like the environment of um, you know, studying as a group, and you're all kind of in it together, it's really great. And there's a lot of people around you, like, you know, academics and teaching staff, and, you know, drop in tutors, and all these people that kind of really care about you and your progress, and they're all there to help you out. So I think it's really um, kind of important to just not be shy or afraid of you know talking to your lecturers and talking to the people around you um and just asking for help because you know they're happy to help and i think sometimes they're just really happy that students are involved and they care so right. i think so that yeah it, it's a poorly kept secret that mathematicians love mathematics right. yeah it's probably very poorly kept <laughs> 
the, 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 the discipline and the field, if you have a deep love for something like this, then we all hope that the future of mathematics is bright. And how, how could to support that? So, so this feeling that we want to help uh, is because we all have an interest in, um, in your development as mathematicians. Even though most of the students that we teach are not going to be research mathematicians, some will be, and that's terrific. But our interest is not, I think, broadly construed, a love of mathematics is just about, it's something that you want to share and help develop in other people because it's good. And Georgie might prove the theorem that I need, or Sandra might prove the theorem that I need, or just do something totally awesome. And um, yeah, all right. So um, look, I found that really interesting and, and very reassuring that you all picked up on this community aspect. So I have a question which is not on the script, by the way, folks. So I'm going to drop this on you. Um, how did you feel about your abilities and skills at the end of first year? Did something happen to your confidence and your sense of what you could do by the end of the first year? Georgie, how did you feel about your, like, about your, um, just have yourself and what you could do intellectually at the end of the first year. I um I always like to say it's not very scientific. I felt like my brain had stretched or grown a bit. Um, I like looking back at the end of first year. I look back to where I'd been at the end of year twelve, and I just I could not believe how much. Like obviously, I had more specific maths knowledge that I'd gained by doing the courses, but also just I had such a deeper understanding of. Uh, how to learn new concepts and just more like a way uh, broader view, I guess, of what maths actually was. Mm. Um, it was a very transformative year for me. Um, Great. Yeah. That, that, that is a first year that's worked. Right? Yeah. That's, that's what and, and not just in mathematics, whatever discipline it is across the, across the campus. Um, you'd be so disappointed if the university was just more high school, right? It, it, it's, it's something different. So that's, I was hoping to hear something from, like that from you, Georgie, but you know, I have to, have to see. And Eamon, how did you feel at the end of your first year? Yeah, I'd say it's fairly similar. One, way, one thing that's nice is uh, if you come from, so I was from Newcastle, it's a bit smaller than say Sydney or Brisbane or something. Um, and within a high school, maybe you'll be like, you know, the best at maths there or, you know, second best around there. Um, but coming to uni, it's a bit more humbling. Like you actually meet people who are, you know, better than you, and it's it's relieving in some ways. <laughs> yeah. Um, Good. So yeah, that was a nice experience for first year. But like, you still finish the year feeling more confident, just because like you've made it through, and like Georgie said, you've broadened like your whole conception of mathematics. Yeah. yeah. And and broaden your hopefully broaden your as Georgie mentioned you your understanding of how to learn, how to take in knowledge, how to, how to build an understanding that goes beyond yeah. when I see this problem, I follow this procedure and I yeah. answer. And it, I think it's, it's feeling confident that you can not understand something initially, but eventually you will understand it. Oh, is it okay to make a mistake? <laughs> Definitely, you have to. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, make some, you make some in public, like talking to your friends and, and, and yet, it's okay, right? It's all part of, of um, becoming a better thinking machine, I guess is, is what I'm thinking. So Sandra, did, how did you feel at the end of your first year taking a mat, a physics and mathematics and things like that? Pretty similar, I think. Like I had a, um, my choice in subjects in first year was pretty tough. And it was a lot of physics and a lot of advanced mathematics. Um, but, you know, you work hard and you get through. And at the end, it is it is a transformative experience. I like that phrase. Um, you definitely like, look back and think, I can't believe I did all those things, but I did. And it's only the first year. So how much more can you, like how much further can you then go? And it's kind of building this confidence and awareness in yourself. Right. Um, okay. 
And so, again, this is off the script, but I just find it really interesting to ask you these questions and I'm hoping the audience can relate to it. So by the end of your first year, each of you's, you've each reported starting to feel more confident, even though, of course, you made mistakes along the way, and but, you, but possibly it's because you've been part of a community and you see that other people are working in this way too, and you've realized how much you have accomplished and how, how your, um, I guess, intellectual powers have grown. Do you think by the end of your first year, when when Georgie and Sandra, you were making this you were making this choice that you're going to study some more mathematics, and Eamon was confirming his choice, I guess. Um, do you think by then you could start to see what the future in mathematics could be for you in terms of oh, I could get jobs in these areas, or I can see what it might be like to continue in mathematics as a researcher, like? When, if at all, do you, do, do you think you started to be able to picture these things without, um, because you started to understand what mathematics, what skills you're acquiring? Georgie, do you, when, do you think you formed a picture of what a future in mathematics could be and when? Um, yeah, I think it did take a bit longer for me um, when I added the maths degree, I think it was more of a, I'm really enjoying this, but I'm not sure. Mm. Uh, I don't know if I'm good enough or if I'm committed enough to want to do this uh, for a career. But I think part of it is just sort of the experience. And like Eamon was talking about, uh, when you do something, realizing that it's okay to not understand something straight away. And the more times you have that experience, the more comfortable it becomes. I think a lot of for a lot of people it's uh like math is challenging as we <laughs> you've mm -hmm. talked about um and I think it takes a long time well it took a long time for me to internalize that that is okay and that's normal um, and just because something's hard doesn't mean you can't do it and recognizing that when your brain says uh this is too hard it's it's normally lying in my experience right so so you're learning to solve complicated problems. And by complicated, I mean, the answer wasn't obvious to you. Yeah. So you had to develop that skill. All right. Um, and so do, do you think you now have a vision of what, what it might mean to take that, whatever skills you've developed in your math degree and turn them into a professional? Yeah. Uh, um, vocation? Yeah, I definitely um, have a lot more confidence now in my ability to uh, at least just keep pushing through and trying all the new levels. Uh, so I, I definitely um, want to do maths honours now after my undergrad to try out some research and see right. how I find that. Um, so, so, so even now, as you're coming to the end of your undergraduate degree, you're not sure exactly how you want to use these skills, but you're yeah. aware that there are options out there for you. Yeah, um, I think a lot of the options look very appealing to me, which is a good place to be in. Like it's better than not wanting to do anything. Well, that, that, that's what I was interested in, in figuring out when you realized, when you became comfortable that, that pursuing mathematics would give you options. Because I'm, I know one con a concern that many students who haven't started studying mathematics but want to have is they don't know what they can be once they've studied mathematics other than a research mathematician or someone who teaches mathematics. And we can get into some of the options that you see for yourself in a little bit. I was, I'm just curious as to when you started to realize that yeah. the options were much more broad than that. Uh, it was probably uh, end of second year to start of third year uh, when a few of my friends started looking at graduate positions and I saw that they were actually looking at a, a pretty wide range of stuff um, mm -hmm. as well as just getting more experience and and seeing more of maths I think always helps. Great all right and I mean when do you think was it when do you think you started to realize the possibilities in the future for yourself things that you might yeah, it's tricky. It was certainly after first year, I'd say. I'd say my first few years at uni, I was just, you know, doing university, focusing on that, 
wasn't thinking too much about what would come ahead. Um, I think even before I started, I think I had a vague plan to be a research mathematician. I think that was sort of my dream. But um, I'd say that it didn't become less appealing, but I sort of opened up to other possibilities and the idea that I could enjoy other things just as much. Um, so sometime after the first year is when you started to yeah. mention to... to... It was, very, it was a very gradual shift, so it's hard to say when, when yeah. exactly. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And Sandra, uh, you've chosen to come and study after getting a degree to keep studying mathematics. Um, when do you think that that realisation dawned on you? I think that realisation actually happened very late. So I had, I always had, after my first year, I had an idea of kind of what I wanted to do in terms of actual work was that I really enjoyed mathematics, I enjoyed programming, and I enjoyed the application of mathematics to problems or, you know, problems in mathematics inspired by real life or physics or whatever you want to call it. Um, and so I knew I wanted to work in that kind of, you know, complex intersection of spaces, but I didn't know exactly what kind of a situation that was going to be in. And so at the end of my first year, when I, you know, started making or had these had a bit more awareness of what I enjoyed doing. I then started looking around at you know where I could do that, um, and so I interned in my second year, and I worked um, during my degree for a little bit. Um, and when I got to the end of my degree, I decided I was going to do honors, um, but I didn't know what I was going to do after my honors. So it was kind of a very, kind of as Eamon said, a very gradual shift. Um, and it was actually during my honors that I decided I wanted to pursue research further. So it took me a very long time to kind of make that decision and, you know, cement myself in academic life a little bit more. Um, but I think having that on the ground experience of, you know, doing honours and doing some like real research work made me realise I actually love this and it gives, it lets me, you know, tick off all the boxes that I wanted to be ticked off. Great, great. Okay, well, thanks for sharing, I mean, th these, these reasonably personal sort of stories of how you feel about things and your confidence and so on. Um, uh, I can be, it can be really hard for students who are thinking about coming to university or just starting to open up about their confidence and, and it's such a relief when, uh, when people realise everyone else is feeling the same uh, and you can just get on with the business of, of working together. But I, I think it's helpful to hear these stories of people who have been there and sort of have come through. Um, I think maybe we could turn our attention now to just some nuts and bolts of degree choices, because um, each of you has a different sort of collection of degrees that you were enrolled in and things you finish, you change into it and finished. And I know some of the students, some of the um, uh, some of our audience will be considering this double degree or or this advanced degree, and they're, they're worried about getting the choice wrong. <laughs> And, and what it means to make this choice and not that choice. Um, and uh, hopefully we've given, given everyone the reassurance that it's okay to, to change your mind. But um, the questions we have here is, what's it like to study mathematics? And if you're doing a, flex, a double degree, can you tell us what it's like to combine mathematics and just be in, a, in what, what it was like to be in whatever undergraduate degree you're in or whatever degree you're in now, what does it feel like or like what's your impression of, of, of that experience? Georgie, you want to start us off? Yeah, uh, so I'm doing the double degree in maths and computing. Hmm. Um, I've really enjoyed my experience. I can highly recommend double degrees. It, it gives you a bit more time to just explore some different subjects. Um, and I think having a sort of a range of subjects to do each semester stops it from getting too monotone. Um, and I found that, I mean, my degrees are pretty closely related. Like there is a lot of math and computing that naturally cross over with each other, but I found that my degrees do help with each other quite a bit. Like the mathematical thinking or even sometimes I use mathematics specifically in computing. Uh, and I've used 
uh, programming in maths as well. Um, mm. There's some, there's always, you look at, people have some weird combinations in their double degrees. Um, like you, I'm sure you'll find any, any combination of degrees you can think of, someone's done it. Um, but there's always some little intersection between them um, where you get some, yeah, interesting co uh, combinations. Um, yeah, and for my experience, I really enjoyed the Bachelor of Math Mathematical Sciences. I think it gets you to cover a really wide range of maths topics. Like coming into it, I, I really didn't know what areas of maths there were. I knew kind of vaguely applied and pure. How could you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And even now when I sign up for my courses, I'll see a bunch of words and that I don't know what they mean. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'll do this. Um, and you learn it as you go. But I think having the degree where you just do a little taster of each different area uh, without that, I, I don't know how I could have known which areas of maths I preferred and didn't. Great. Well, by the way, that's our job when we make the curriculum is to make sure that we we present the some we represent something of the variety of mathematics that's out there at, at important stages so that you can you can find the one that works that you're attracted to. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for that, Georgie. Eamon. You want to tell us about your experience and what's it like to be study the, the mathematics degree you've studied and the honours in particular? What's it like to be um, in that situation? Yeah, well, I guess I might focus on honours then because yeah. I've had that experience. Um, I don't know what else to say for the undergraduate. I think Georgie sort of covered a lot of it. Um, yeah, so honours, for those who don't know, you have your honours year in mathematics. So it's two semesters. In the first semester, you sort of do like three three ordinary courses in maths plus you spend some time working on a project with your supervisor and then in the second semester your goal is to produce a thesis on that topic around 50 to 70 pages long it's even it's on my desk right next to me my thesis printed out uh, and also in the final semester you do you do one normal course so it's sort of uh, skewed towards the second semester in doing your honors project work um, You're trying out what it's like to, to do original research. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's really it's really fun and interesting. Like, sort of being sent out on your own to you know find some papers and read, understand them, see how they all link together, and try and put it into one coherent story about the topic that you've chosen. That's really interesting. Um, and, yeah, and we've talked extensively about this transformative experience that is the first year of your undergraduate degree. Do you think the honours year has had? Yes, I would say so. Um, though it's hard to say exactly how. I've, I've gotten better at explaining things, I would say, in like my writing of mathematics, because you don't get as much practice with that in the earlier years. So being able to produce a large body of work and have it sort of, it needs to be approachable for any other mathematician. Um, so that was. Right. That was good practice. Uh, so, um, d diving into my own experience so long ago, folks, the internet was barely a thing. Um, uh, I remember my honours year as the year in which I learned to ask good mathematical questions. Mm -hmm. I learned to formulate a mathematical question. And that, of course, that, that, is that something that you... Yeah, there's definitely, when it's all open-ended, and so one thing that one skill that you develop is sort of you read a paper and then finding what they've left unsaid, I guess. So finding like, you know, a detail that they've missed that you might need to fill in. Like it's, you sort of imagine like, you know, a paper, it's all, it's all there. Everything's hundred percent written out, but it's really not the case in real life. Um, and finding those like, you know, the open ends of the paper, like where they indicate what future research might be about. And, you know, it's really exciting to see those opportunities to, yeah. And so do you feel your powers have grown again from the end of I, your Yeah, it's always hard to say. Uh, I, I'd say so, yes, but it, I, it's it's the same sort of development that you've had for the first three years, the same like being comfortable with approaching problems that you don't know the answer to. And um, I guess it's also being more comfortable with these open-ended questions. So you don't get given a problem and say, here's a statement, find the proof. 
you you choose the statement that you're going to prove as well so um it may not even be true no one knows and right. yeah and was you mentioned a supervisor yes how did you find the process of finding someone to work with yeah so with finding a supervisor i would actually say it sounds like sandra had a different experience to this with most people but i i'd say the normal experience is to find a supervisor first and a project second, I guess. So a lot of people will go and talk to lecturers or any of the staff in the maths department that they've had some contact with and they get along with. And they ask them, like, do you have any interesting ideas for honors projects? So this is how I got involved with my project. I'd taken a, a computational algebraic geometry course with Martin Helmer. And it was actually the semester where I was choosing my on a supervisor, so it was fresh in my mind. <laughs> um, I talked to Martin about uh, any ideas. He, he threw out, I think, three different project ideas, and one of them sounded interesting to me, and we got off from there. Great. Um, yeah. Thanks. And Sandra, you, you're in a different place here because you're in the PhD program. Yep. So do you, do you want to tell us what it's like to be in the PhD program at MSI? Sure. So I think the PhD is pretty different to being in your undergrad in that it's it's kind of as you progress through your degree, you know, quite like kind of like Eamon said, questions get more and more open ended. And the PhD is kind of the giant gaping pit of open ended questions where it's it's very self motivated and it's very, very open, especially I'm only six months into my PhD at the moment. So it is very much, you know, questions and a lot of them. And it's very much, you kind of know you're interested in an area or a particular problem or an application, but you don't even know what the question is yet. And you certainly don't know the answers. So it's very much um, an open exploration of kind of the area. And the thing that I guess you kind of focus on in your first year is exactly, you know, exploring that area, exploring the literature. It involves a lot of reading, a lot of figuring out, you know, whom you could get some help from, whom you could talk to um, and things like that. So you may not even know the problem that you're working on just yet. And Sandra, do you feel like a professional? It's a, it's a difficult question to answer. I don't know. I think I'll probably feel like a student for life, but I think that's also just research in general, probably is. I don't know what at what point I'll start feeling like a professional. I think I'll maybe one day I'll be lucky enough to feel like a professional question asker. I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Well, thank you for the, the descriptions of the different, uh, the different, you know, what it's like to be a student here in, in different places. Um, so we're, we are running a bit short on time, but I think something that the audience might be interested in is um, opportunities that, that you've discovered or you see uh, that are available to you at MSI to get involved in research. It, besides being a PhD student, I think the ones are pretty clear, uh, but and in things like internships or research that you were able to, to research opportunities that came up outside the formal structure. Uh, so Georgie and Eamon and, and you too, Sandra, what do you see as the opportunities that, that it might be that the audience might know about? Ways in which you could start to sample research or things you could do outside the main direct line of of being a, a student and taking courses or working on your thesis. Georgie, did you see opportunities for internships or research? Yeah, so I haven't done any research opportunities in the maths department, but I have done a couple of uh, research projects in computing um, and I really enjoyed them. Mm. I think ANU does really encourage undergrad research uh, and they run a, a few programs, like they have the, I did the summer research scholarships um, mm. where you get to work with a research team. Well, in my experience, I worked with a team that was working on some new project. Uh, I got to see a bit what it's like to 
to work as a researcher and it's definitely something I'd be interested in trying in maths in the future to get an idea of what uh, maths research is more like. And were you paid a stipend to do that? Yeah, I was. Um, I think there's information probably on the summer research scholarships page, uh, but it's a scholarship that covers you for the summer. And I think you can do it whether you're an ANU student or you're an interstate student at a different uni, you can come here and do a project as well. And, and when in your degree did you, did you do this? Uh, I did one at the end of first year and one at the end of second year. Mm. Um, so instead, I, instead of uh, scooping ice cream or yeah, or uh, making cappuccinos for the summer job, you were doing a research project. Yeah, it was definitely a very different experience to my other. I had had a job beforehand, uh, but I I quit the job to try out this research project. Right. Um, it was <laughs> very different, definitely, but really rewarding. Great. And Eamon, did you do you see opportunities to do research or internships or picture or, or sample what comes next? Yeah, I had a few opportunities. So it, it sounds like Georgie and I did, may have done the same type of project I did one at the end of first year with computer science. So it may have been the same sort of thing. Um, but also in particular with MSI, uh, at the end of second year, I worked on this project with, as with Scott Morrison um, about, uh, it's called lean and interactive theorem proving. So it was, it was kind of on the computer science side where you're, you have this computer programming language and you're using it to formalize mathematical statements and to help you like write a proof uh, and it's formally checked by the program. Um, so that was a really interesting project. And I sort of, I got into that myself and another student from my year, we just went and talked to this lecturer like after class one day and asked about this thing that um, he'd been working on and we ended up uh, all working together over the summer doing some interesting things and it was a lot of fun. Great. So that sound, sounds like your interest came first and then some initiative to um, to ask and and then someone said, yeah, let's do it. All right. yeah. Terrific. And Sandra, you're a PhD student. Do you see opportunities to do things besides just that main line of, of writing your PhD thesis? Absolutely. I think opportunities come up all the time. Like, you know, you sometimes it's just about knowing what the people around you are doing. And, you know, we attend, we go to talks and like we hear people talk about their research. And sometimes you just pick up on, oh, you know, that's something that's really interesting. And I could probably work on that a little bit outside of, you know, the kind of just the topic that I'm focused on. Or sometimes you listen to a talk and go, hey, like the thing that I'm working on is being used in a completely different problem, but could equally be applied to their problem. And, you know, like a different tangent kind of sparks off of that. So it's definitely, you know, there's always room for interaction. But yeah, it's, you know, the same as being an undergrad. It just takes a bit of open-mindedness and a bit of initiative to, you know, pull up your socks and go and talk to someone and be like, hey, I'm interested in what you're doing and will you talk to me, please? Right. Or will you let me work with you? You know, it's the same. Mm. Terrific. And, and Sandra, have you been doing any teaching? Um, I have been doing teaching, yes. So I taught a couple of, um, or tutored for a couple of undergrad courses. Um, in And yeah, actually, Georgia was one of my students last year, I think. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. Um, so yeah, I've taught a little bit as well, yes. And it's a pretty fun experience. Great. It's going and to add. I also got to tutor in round third and fourth year and it's it's really good experience being able to like teach other people and it's a lot of fun you definitely learn a lot as well you, you learn a lot of mathematics by trying to explain things you you already had an understanding of and but your understanding deepens in a way that's um really wonderful absolutely Georgie. yeah and and georgie did you take see any opportunities to be involved in tutoring or that sort yeah of uh, so I did a PAL mentoring program when I was in second year where uh, you help out at the at some of the first year tutes uh, and that really showed me uh, sort of how maths tut runs from the tutor's perspective and it was a really fun experience. I really enjoyed it and I also tutor, I tutor in computer science. Did you? And, and you get paid to be a tutor, of course. Uh, yeah. Get that out there. This is not something that people are doing 
for, for no, re, re, no pay. All right, terrific. So just briefly, the future. The future, we hope, is looking bright and wonderful for you, but what do you see what do you see ahead of you in the future, given that you've been studying some mathematics and, and some, perhaps some other things? But what, what lies ahead, Georgie? Uh, so I think I have a little bit longer before, <laughs> before yeah. I have to make any decisions, but I'm planning on uh, doing an honours year in maths uh, to try out research maths um, and see what it's like. And then I'm considering, I'm considering uh, academia or doing a PhD. Uh, so I just don't want to stop doing maths quite yet. So, so I guess you, you, you understand that you don't have to choose and be forever stuck with that choice and you're still curious about, about developing those research skills. Yeah, definitely. I, I just want to keep trying out some new things in maths. I seem to enjoy most things that I try in maths. So I think I'll be pretty fine, whatever ends up happening. Good, good, thanks. And Eamon, what's what lies ahead for you coming to the end? You've finished your honours year. Yes, it's a bit open-ended for me at the moment. Um, I've been doing some applications for graduate programs next year, as in within Canberra, working, working in industry or working in, for the government department. What well, industry um, and government departments want people who studied mathematics? <laughs> so, yeah, apparently. Uh, <laughs> so one in particular is the Bureau yeah, yeah. of Statistics. So what sort of industries? Um, uh, do you think would, would are going to find you interesting? Well, well, I wish I knew in more detail, but <laughs> uh, in particular, so I've, I've gotten an application with the Bureau of Statistics in one. Uh, for a lot of students, um, ASD is an interesting opportunity because they have ASD the partnership with ANU. Yep. Yeah. Um, so ASD, that's all the cybersecurity and intelligence stuff. Um, also, uh, if I can angle it in this direction, there's also a lot of opportunities with uh, sort of data science areas um, in terms of private industry as sort of consulting or again in government departments. Yeah. Terrific. And if, do you know some people have gone into to the financial sector and so on? Yes, I know a couple of people have done that. Um, yeah. But to be fair, a lot of the other honor students that I know have, a lot of them are continuing on into academia doing further like a master's or yeah sure great mm -hmm. and sandra i mean uh, you're six months into your phd and it's it's um it is pretty early to say what comes next but how, how do you see your what can you see of your future besides a bright sunny day and strolling through the meadow Strolling through the meadow is pretty good. You're in the meadow right now. That's true. And I mean, if only I could, I mean, I guess the nice thing about mathematics is you can do it anywhere, even in the meadow, if only my computer would last that long. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for the future, I think we'll just see how it goes. But I'm really excited to be working in a research space um, and to be able to do research mathematics, which was something I came into pretty late. So like I looked into industry as well. You know, I worked as an intern for a little bit and I can definitely say that a lot of people want to hire mathematicians. And like sometimes you find it in places you don't expect as well. Um, like, you know, people in consulting, you know, want minds that are, you know, bright and are able to do lots of problems, can use computers. And so, you know, it's a it's a pretty applicable space. But for my future, I think I'm pretty happy with doing research. And I just hope that I'll be a, um, a good enough researcher <laughs> to, to make it. Yeah. Well, um, just to pick up on that point, what my interpretation of why the skills that you've, the three of you have developed and are continuing to develop are in demand is precisely because as Georgie pointed out, the problems are hard. No one shows you how to solve them and you learn to solve hard problems and you learn um, sort of this robust intellectual approach to solving problems with quantitative skills. And you learn to, um, I think another thing that came up was Studying, of course, and not knowing what it's about, but knowing that you'll pick it up as you go, you, you get this confidence that, okay, for this task that my employer needs would like me to perform, I need to sort of move into this new space, but I can do it. 
I know how to master hard things. I know it might look confusing at first, but I can get there. And you've got skills, you develop the skills necessary to do that um, and to express yourself well. Because as, as Eamon pointed out, he, in his honours years, learning to communicate and to write and to express himself. And, and each of you has tried this teaching game, which is of course so much of it is about learning to communicate the way that you understand something to other people. And so much of what we do in for a living as humans is, is try to communicate to other people why the way we see something is the way it should be or, um, or something like that. Okay, well, thank you very much for all of your insights. I think we've come to an end of the show. Do you have any, I'll just ask each of you for one more comment. You imagine our audience, there are people who are thinking about coming to study at ANU in particular mathematics. And maybe you have something just to say to, to people, some words of wisdom to pass on that you've picked up along the way, wherever, wherever you are so far along your journey, Georgie. Do you have no pressure? We just need wisdom <laughs> right now. All right. Um, what What do you think? You, what do you think you'd like to say to someone in in the audience who might be like you as a seventeen year old? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing for me coming into maths that what I had to really challenge about myself was just being very willing to fail and not know the answers right away and be comfortable asking for help. I ask for a lot of help all the time from anyone who can give it to me. Um, and, and, and asking for help doesn't make you um, weak or incapable or something, quite the opposite, right? No, and the more people ask for help, the more comfortable everyone else is asking for help. And you end up with, I think there's a really friendly culture here um, and I feel, yeah, I feel like everyone really wants you to succeed. You just have to put yourself out there a tiny bit. So uh, you, you don't feel a competitive vibe that, um, that, that your failure will be someone else's success, quite the opposite? Yeah, not at all. I found um, it's a very strong community. I know most of the people who are in my courses, uh, we all work together on the assignments and study together for exams. It's, it's very uplifting. Terrific. Terrific. Thanks, Georgie. And thanks for all the things that you've shared today. Yes. Uh, Eamon, do you have words of wisdom for folks who might feel the way that you feel but be 17 years old? Yeah, yeah, words of wisdom. Well, or, or, or folks who might be coming to the end of an undergraduate degree. And yeah, yeah. I would say, similar to what Georgie said, it's things will feel very different difficult at first and it just takes time sometimes like you'll look back on things you did the semester before and it feels so easy in retrospect and it wasn't easy to learn but you'll be amazed at how well you absorb things and how easy it feels once you really get it yeah 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 so maybe if a student's in year 12 right now and they're not sure what this would mean Think about what they did in year, year nine mathematics yep. and, and the way they feel about it now. Yeah. All right. Well, that's, um, I think that's helpful. Uh, thanks, Eamon. And thanks for sharing all your insights today. Sandra, words of wisdom for, sure. for folks out there. I'll try my best. I think I like both what Georgie and Eamon have said. And I guess the only thing I might say is just, don't be scared to try new things and like Georgie said as well don't be scared to you know get it wrong at first and yeah just um you know be confident to step out and try lots of things because by trying lots of things you'll eventually find the thing that you like probably so just you know just getting out there and trying some things that's about right. it right. okay well thanks Sandra and thanks for sharing uh your insights today crew I think that might be it we should call it a day. To the audience out there, um, I think there's a lot to learn from what you've heard today. And my one of my big takeaways is uh, each of the panelists has a story which is about realizing they're enjoying mathematics and they're connecting with it. And that also that in university, when it goes well, 
your intellectual um, outlook will change and that mathematics, your understanding of what it is will evolve. And, uh, but that's not easy, but everyone's in it together. And that um, the outcome is, um, is wonderful. It can be really wonderful. And you'll have options and you don't, by choosing something, you, your choices are not irreversible. You can try things out. And we heard a lot of that today of trying things or realizing that something that um, a, a change was going to be good. And just, um, you don't have to worry about making, getting a decision wrong. You can always try something else, but mathematics is, um, it opens doors for you and, it, and it's good for your brain and a lot of fun and beautiful. Okay, thanks everyone. Thanks for sharing your thoughts.